Hi, I'm Mike Crowley and today at Fluid Mechanics I'm going to explain water hammer in pipes. Water hammer is a special transient flow case. Transient flow and the study of transient flow which is called surge analysis um, is concerned with dynamically changing flow velocities in pipe. Water hammer occurs when there is a sudden or rapid change in the flow velocity. It's usually associated with a valve slamming closed or rapid closing of a valve. It can lead to um, very high pressure transients which can cause the pipe to fail. Often it is associated with a banging noise which um, leads to the term water hammer. Basically you have a big column, a long column of water and you're rapidly stopping it. It bangs against the valve and it causes a banging noise. In this lesson um, I will explain the theory behind um, water hammer. I'll show you how to calculate the pressure transients that are induced um, due to water hammer. I will explain this shortly at Fluid Mechanics. So let me explain what is happening and how to calculate the induced pressures. So if I draw a sketch of a tank connected to a pipe, so this is a header tank with a pipeline connected to it. And in this tank we have a head of fluid and that is pushing the fluid along the pipe. And it's going to have an initial velocity ui and it's going into a open tank at this end here so this is our initial um, conditions constant velocity ui initial u, u initial along the pipe into a tank and there's a head of fluid which is pushing the flow along the pressure at the inlet to the pipe is, um, well if you've got a head there, it's um, the pressure equals um, pressure at the inlet or pressure initial equals rho, which is the density, gravity, times the h, the head. Now knowing the pressure at the inlet to the pipe, and if you know the other conditions along the pipe, you know the length of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe, the viscosity of the fluid, it's possible to calculate what the flow rate is along the pipe. Now in this um, video I'm not going to explain how to do that, but, it, but it's not a very difficult job to actually calculate the velocity along the pipe. Um, so then what happens? Well, we show um, a sudden close. So in the transient the water hammer case, we have a sudden closure of a valve at the end of the pipe. So at some instance in time, the end of the pipe is closed off. And so I'm just going to show a blockage on the end of the pipe there to show that the flow is, is, is being, the pipe is being closed. Now, in the instantaneous you do that, you've still got flow coming in at the start of the pipe. But at this end of the pipe here, the flow has stopped because it can't, it's got nowhere to go. So what actually happens is it sets up a pressure front or a wave front which travels up the pipe. And I'm going to show it at this position here. And this, this pressure or wave front travels up the pipe at velocity C. Um, and C is the, velocity, the sonic velocity in the pipe. So on this side of the wave front here, the velocity, and I'll put it u, equals zero. And on this side of the pipe, um, the velocity is still the initial velocity. Now that is a little bit theoretical because that, that's sort of assuming you had an instantaneous closure of the valve. But no matter how fast you close it, there will be some time it takes you to close the valve. And um, in that case, what happens, instead of just being a um, one plane in the pipe, the, the, the change in velocity will occur over a section of pipe. So, so this is probably a bit more realistic. And basically what we're saying is that over this length here, there will be a pressure change, delta P, okay, where 
the, the, uh, on this side the velocity is u the the initial velocity and on this side of the wavefront the velocity is the zero velocity so the velocity will be changing across this wavefront now the length of this wavefront from here to here is to do with how long it takes to close the valve so if the valve was closed instantaneously it would just be a plane but um, if it takes a fraction of a second basically it's how fast how far that wavefront travels in the time so basically the time it takes to to close the valve times the sonic velocity will determine what the length of that wavefront is now across the wave front okay the velocity is going from the initial velocity down to zero velocity there's a change in momentum or change in velocity across that wave front that wave front um, can only um, change momentum or the velocity can only change if there's a force applied to the fluid okay we've now got to look at Newton's second law to work out what the forces applied to the fluid as it goes across that wave front are Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration now in our case we're not talking about forces we're talking about pressures and we're not talking about um, mass and acceleration we're changing talking about changes in momentum so for us the um, the force that's acting across that um, wave front there is the the differential pressure dp across the wave front acting on the area of the pipe so I'll put down a for the area of the pipe so now we need to look at well what what is the um, momentum change across that wave front well the wave front is traveling up the pipe at velocity C so at any instance in time we can actually work out how much fluid is traveling through that wave front okay and the the amount of fluid that's traveling through that wave front is basically how fast it's going up the pipe um, times the area of the of the wa the wave front um, times the density of the fluid. So so the mass flow rate part of it is the velocity of the wave front c times the area of the pipe a, okay, times the density of the fluid rho, okay. So 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 basically. The, the momentum, the, the fluid that's actually going through that wave front in terms of kilograms per second going up through the wave front is CAP. So in other words, the velocity of the wave front, that's the sonic velocity of the wave front, the area of the pipe and the density of the fluid. Okay. And that's that's the mass flow rate going through that wave front. And how much is the velocity changing? Well it's going from UI down to to zero so in other words it's going from an in the initial velocity down to zero so 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 the momentum change is ui so we can take out a from both sides of that equation there so we've basically got delta p equals c rho ui or more generally we say that the pressure for a sudden closure of a valve is c rho u okay now that that equation there is called the Joukowsky equation and it's a famous equation and that determines what the maximum pressure rise you can get due to to water hammer is so basically the pressure rise you the, the maximum pressure rise is the, um, the the sonic velocity the speed of sound in the fluid the density of the fluid um, times the the change in speed the fluid so so it's the initial speed going down to zero so let's try and um, apply this equation to say a 15 millimeter copper pipe and say if we had a 15 millimeter copper pipe with a um, an initial speed of one one meter per second and, and what we want to do is find out when we suddenly close the valve how much pressure rise we're going to get for a 15 millimeter copper pipe well Let's just put down some details first of all of the copper pipe. So, so we've got a diameter of the copper pipe is 15 millimeters, and and the um, initial velocity u 
equals one. Okay, one meter per second. That's 15 millimeters. Um, one, one, one meter per second in a 15 millimeter pipe is actually equivalent to 8.7 liters per minute. Okay, so when we look at this equation um, and, and we try to apply it, well, the first thing we, we can say, is, well, if we were talking about water in a copper pipe, that's what I'm talking about here. Um, we know the initial velocity, that's going to be one. We know the density of water, that's um, normally a thousand kilo, kilograms per meter um, cubed. The thing we're not sure about is, well, what's the sonic velocity? And that's what I'm going to talk about next. So to find the sonic velocity, um, in a fluid, um, well, as you need to apply Hooke's law to the thing. Now, now there's, if we assume that the um, pipe is perfectly rigid and does not flex, okay, you can apply this equation, which is Hooke's law, which basically says that the sonic speed is equal to the square root of the the bulk modulus, okay, divided by the density of the fluid. Now, um, for for water, um, let's let's just calculate that out. For water, we got C equals the square root of the bulk modulus of water is two point one nine times ten to the nine pascals, and the density is a thousand. So, if you calculate that you get a, de a speed of 1,480 meters per second. Now that's assuming that the pipe is um, perfectly rigid. But um, pipes aren't perfectly rigid, they actually flex. And that actually affects the stiffness of the system and as it gets less stiff, the sonic speed comes down. So there's a modification you can do to this equation to take into account the, um, the stiffness of the pipe. Um, and basically you modify Hooke's law, the, the equation, so that so C equals the square root of 1 on, let's just think about this, rho, 1 on K plus so what's this equation saying basically what this this equation is saying here is that the the sonic speed um, it's the density same as there one on k that's the bolt the, the, the bolt modulus um, plus d d is the diameter of the pipe E is the Young's modulus of the pipe material, um, and then little e is the wall thickness. Okay, so this is now taking it. This this term of the, this part of the equation here is taking into a, into account the stiffness of the actual pipe itself. If the pipe was perfectly rigid, then effectively what that's that's saying is that um, you have infinite um, Young's modulus for for the material, and if if that number if that number was infinitely large, then this term would would drop down to zero okay and if that's zero if you put zero in there you'll effectively come back to this this original equation here so basically that's that's how it's modified so as as this becomes less stiff then this term in the equation becomes more important and it actually reduces the speed so if we actually now put in some numbers for that um, now for a copper pipe um, e of, of the 50 for a standard 50 millimeter copper pipe I believe the uh, wall thickness is 0.7 millimeters and for copper E Young's modulus is 120 times 10 to the 9 pascals okay so if I put those numbers into that equation uh, I put those numbers into the equation. We'll get um, so 
times 10 to the 9. Okay, and um, if you work that out, you'll get C equals 1, 2, 5, 4 meters per second. So the velocity has come down from for a copper pipe from 1,480 for a perfectly rigid copper pipe down to uh, 1,254 meters per second. Actually, copper pipe is very stiff, um, but it all depends on the pipe you're choosing. So if you're talking about the pipes that take water to your house, the, the plastic pipes that they now, nowadays use in the road, um, typically you'd find the wave speed in one of those would be around about a, a thousand meters per second. But if you took a very flexible pipe, like say a garden hose pipe, you know, you could be talking in terms of um, hundreds of meters per second. The other thing to bear in mind about the wave speed, though, is the um, is the bulk modulus. Water, in particular, is very stiff. OK, so that's 2.19 times 10 to the 9. Now, that's true as long as there's no air in the, in the water. But often you get little small air bubbles in the water and they can have quite a significant effect on the bulk modulus and bring down the speed quite significantly so that that can be quite an important factor but anyway we'll carry on with the um with the calculation so we now want to work out what the pressure rise is due to this this closure of um, this 50 millimeter pipe with a one meter per second flow in it and we close the end of the valve basically the pressure rise then equals so we just apply we have the numbers now to apply to the Joukowsky equation so the pressure rise looking at the Tukuski equation is going to be C, which is 1, 2, 5, 4, times the density of water, which is normally 1,000 um, meters per 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times the velocity, which in our particular example is 1. And if we work that out, that comes out at 12.54 um, times 10 to the and I'm going to put it in times 10 to the 5 because 1 times 10 to the 5 is 1 bar okay so that's basically equals 12.5 bar so that's that's the pressure rise you would get in that particular case maximum um, I happen to know that the um, that the pressure rating of a copper pipe I believe uh, of that specification is 58 bar so the safety factor for that particular case is um, 58 bar divided by 12.5, um, which equals 4.64. So the safety factor is, is 4.64. Another way of looking at that is, well, if we'd actually had a, a much higher velocity, so in other words, if, if the initial velocity was 4.64, we would have actually then got 58 bar. Now, for a copper pipe, um, that will be going some. So actually, normally for copper pipes, when you close the end of the valve, you don't have a problem from a burst point of view. But just be a little bit careful with that because um, the burst pressure is not the only thing that's um, important when you're designing a hydraulic system. Um, you've got all the fittings on the end of the pipes. They're, they're, they're quite highly likely to be ripped off if you go excessive pressures. You've got all the bracketry um, on the walls and things like that. If you've got movement in the pipes, you might affect that. Um, and obviously, if you've got bends in pipes, they can tend to flex. So there are other, other things to take into account. So... In summary, um, to calculate um, the pressure rise due to a sudden closure and water hammer, what you need to know is the initial flow conditions and the initial flow velocity. You need to understand or work out what the, the sonic speed is, and I've shown you in the, um, in the lesson how to calculate that. And you need to know the density of the pipe, the density of the fluid. Um, from that, you can apply the Joukowsky equation and basically the maximum pressure rise is the, um, the product of the um, um, velocity, the wave speed and the density. If you have any questions on this, then um, please leave a comment on my website blog and I will endeavour to answer any questions there. I cannot answer any um, general questions um, directly by email, but I will, if you leave a question on the blog, try and answer it there. If you need any more detailed advice, particularly if you need advice on um, surge analysis on a sort of consultancy by 
type basis, well then please contact me directly. That's it today from Fluid Mechanics. Thank you for listening.